Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to do something that I really didn't plan on doing. I ended up getting commissioned for this and thought it would be a really fun video. So today we are going to be making Taruk from Avatar. So let's get started. Now how I'm going to go about doing Taruk is I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Normally I start off with my clay first, but because we have so much fabric dyeing and painting to do, I'm going to start off with that first. So here is the pattern that we're going to do. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. We've got the wings, the main body. We kind of have it to where the belly is going to be two pieces and the back is going to be one. And then obviously we have the legs. So I'm going to get everything cut out and we're going to start dyeing the fabric. So for the first round of dyeing, what I'm doing is I'm just taking all of my orange fabric pieces and darkening different sections and trying to blend that darkness into the original orange. So I'm going to start off with browns and I'm going to work my way to adding more of a red tint to this area. So I'm going to have to do this to majority of the fabric, just kind of picking different areas from looking at references of where it's going to be darker versus lighter. Um, eventually I will add some yellows to kind of brighten up our orange, but I'm mainly focusing on getting that dark red going. And then for the very tips of the wings, these fabric pieces are actually kind of paler than most. So I started off with more of an off-white that I'm going to add yellow to and then add orange to and try and have it blend from the orange to yellow to the white. Once I get my initial colors down, I'm going to have to let everything completely dry before we can start doing the line work. So what I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to set everything off to the side to dry, but I'm also going to use a heat gun to kind of speed things along. This is a nice trick that I like to use so I don't have to wait so long on things. I also like using it on my acrylic paint when I'm painting my clay pieces because it speeds it up so much. But yeah, we're going to get all of that completely dried and then I'm going to go along all the fabric with a black paint and I'm going to try and get all those markings in place. This is going to take a little bit more time honestly because there's a lot and I had to use a lot of different reference photos, even fan art, to try and figure out where all the markings are supposed to go. From the looks of it, it looks like majority of the really thick decorative lines are on his back and then the underside of him is very just splotchy and um, very random so I didn't really follow any pattern for that. I just kind of did what I felt fit well with the fabric that I'm using. But with the back, I took my time and I tried to lay out everything as best as I could. So I just wanted to make sure that I explained why I had to wait for everything to dry before adding the line work. And it's mainly because if the fabric is wet, the lines will actually bleed into the fabric. And I didn't want that. I want very clean, straight lines. If you want something kind of bleedy and uh, splotchy, I highly recommend not waiting and doing that. It might bleed a little bit more than you want, but you can always go over it again in darken areas. But uh, for very crisp lines, you want to have the fabric dry. And then of course, before we start our sewing, I'm going to have to let everything dry again. So for the fabric for the wings, we have three different sections for each wing. Technically we kind of have like two sets of wings, but we have the main wing, the end of the wing that kind of branches off into more of an insect wing, and then we have the secondary smaller wing set. So each one of these is just going to be uh, sandwiched together with the painted side inwards, and then we're going to follow along the sewing lines that we have drawn out. So we're just going to sew that with our sewing machine, and then we can flip everything right side out. Thank you. 
And then once we have the wing sections flipped right side out, we need to sew in the arm section for both of the wings. For the larger one, I'm going to have it kind of curved and actually shaped like an arm. So I have that sketched out and I'm just going to follow that with my sewing machine. The smaller one is just going to be like one little section on the very top to where I can stuff and add a wire. I didn't want to do anything super fancy with this one. Now to put together the larger set of wings, what we're going to do is we're going to need four wires ran through because we have the wire frame needed for the majority of the wing itself and then the insect sections of the wings I want to be posable as well so they hold their shape so each one of those is also going to need a wire. So I'm going to start running my wires through the fabric and getting everything laid out. We can then sew the insect section to the other wing and then we can start stuffing that arm portion. Now these wings aren't done quite yet. We do have a little tiny finger where we need to add a claw, but I need to make the claws first. So we're gonna have to make those when we work on all the clay pieces. But for now, these are good. And then for the smaller set of wings, we're gonna have just one set of wires going through. We're gonna stuff these and just put them on the wire frame real quick. We're not gonna combine the two wings until we start adding them to the wire frame for the body. And then the rest of the sewing for the body, we have the underside of it, which has a left and a right, and we're just going to sew these two pieces together to make one solid belly piece. And then the back is kind of the same, there's a left and a right, and we're just gonna sew those together. But now that that's done, we can start working on the clay pieces. I really roughly sketched out the size that I need for the head along with the feet. It, I know you probably can't even tell that that's a foot down there, but that's going to be the basic shape that we're going to do for the foot. Again, I said it was very quickly. <laughs> So the first things that we're actually going to be working on are going to be the more fragile pieces. So I'm going to be starting off with my epoxy sculpt clay. So I'm going to be making the fans that go on the top and the bottom of his head. And then we're also going to be making all the claws for the wings and for the toes. And so for the fans, I'm going to be taking pretty decent sized balls of clay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pull and pinch and try and get that long like thin shape that I need. So I'm gonna kind of just mess around with that and try and get it as thin and tall as I can. And then once I'm happy with the shape of both of the fins, I'm going to add kind of a rough texture. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of line work on the sides and then the end, I don't want to be super smooth. So I'm gonna rough that up too. Now for the claws, the ones for the wings are going to be a lot longer and I'm also just going to kind of really quickly make them. I don't need to be super fancy or anything like that. But for the toes, these are going to be very small and I want them to be more curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make cones of clay. They're all going to be the same size and I'm going to take a wooden dowel and I'm going to wrap my clay and kind of pinch it in shape around the dowel. Once I have it to where I like it, I'm going to slowly take it off of the wooden dowel and set it off to the side to dry. Now epoxy clay cures overnight. Basically it needs 24 hours to cure on its own. You don't have to bake it. It's basically like resin. So I'm going to have to wait till the next morning and then we can start on the rest of the clay. So I'm going to start with the clay head first. I have a lump of tin foil connected to a glass container so I have something to hold on to while working on it and I'm going to get this completely covered in clay. I'm going to blend everything together and try and thin it out so it's not super heavy and then once I have a basic shape I can start adding my details. 
Now the shape of Taruk's head is more kind of arrow shape and it has these really defining ridges. So I'm going to have to build up clay there to kind of get that to stick out a little bit more. And then I'm going to also have to push in to try and get the area where his eyes are going to be to sink in a little bit more because they are kind of more sunken into his head. For the eyes and stuff, I'm at first just going to make some indents to mark out where I want them. And then for the mouth, I'm going to roughly sketch out where the opening is going to be. I'm going to clean up those lines a little bit and then I can start adding more clay to the beak section in the front of his mouth. So I just want those to kind of stick out a little bit more. So I'm going to add clay there, kind of blend them and make sure that they look correct um, before I move on to different sections of his face. Now for the two antennae that continue going down his head, um, those we're going to have to add after we get the clay done. But I do need to have some spots to where we can connect them because they are going to have a wire frame because my idea is to make them poseable. So I'm just going to put two little holes in the back of his head and then we can continue adding more details to him. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two sails that we made and I'm going to add them to the face. So I'm going to take the top and bottom one and I'm just going to push them in place, make sure they're kind of sunken in a little bit so they hold their place. And then I'm going to blend the clay into both of them. That way it doesn't look like they're just two separate things sitting on top of the clay. Now for his eyes, I need to remember he does have four of them, but I am going to start off with the larger front eyes first. For this, I'm going to start off with a ball of clay. I'm going to push it into the little socket that I made, still trying to make sure that it stays rounded. I don't want to flatten it too much. And then I'm going to start taking little strips of clay to build up the bottom and top eyelid. I'm basically going to do the same thing to the second pair of eyes, just on a smaller scale. And then once I have the eyes placed, I'm then going to start working on the texture. Kind of starting off around the eyes, I'm going to add those wrinkles to where the eyelids would crease and different things. And then I'm going to kind of branch out from there with more of a rough texture on the rest of the face. Now I need to bake our clay head real quick for about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. So while that's in the oven, I'm going to start working on the back feet. And then once everything is done baking, we're going to go back to the head to make our antennae. 
So for the back feet, I have a pretty simple wireframe setup. From looking at reference photos, which it's really hard to get a good shot of his feet, it looks like he has two main front toes and then like a back talon. So I have the wireframe branched off into two toes right now and what we're going to do is we're going to add clay to the ends of these and then use our extra claws that we made ahead of time and push them into the clay. So basically I'm trying to get just the toes done right now and I'm going to throw these in with the head real quick for like 20 minutes of the baking time so I can get these kind of like saved in place. Um, once that's cooled we can start adding more clay to the wireframe. So again, I'm going to get my wireframe completely covered. I'm going to start adjusting the shape and getting the basic layout of the foot. Um, and then once I like how that looks, we're going to add that third claw. So I'm just going to add a little bit of clay for that toe, blend it in, and push that claw into place like we did with the other claws. These are going to bake for roughly about the same time as the head, about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Okay, so now that our clay head is done baking, it's cool to touch, let's get working on those antennae. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wires, which we're going to measure out to roughly what we think the antennae need to be, and then I'm going to take some plain white yarn and I'm going to start wrapping it onto these wires. Now to wrap the wire, I'm going to first crimp the yarn at the end, kind of like lock it in place, and then I'm just going to keep going down. So basically I've found the best way to get a smooth texture is to go about roughly an inch one way, go back and then come back again. So I'm kind of going forward, back, forward, and then I'm going to start another inch forward, back, forward until I get to the very, very end. And if you wanted to like have one end thicker than the other, you can just kind of start going back a little bit more um, in different areas. But this seems to be the best way to keep it as smooth as possible and you don't get it as lumpy. Just take your time too. You want to do it nice and tight. And then once I have my wire completely wrapped in yarn, I'm going to take some fabric glue and I'm going to coat the entire thing. This will kind of lock everything in place. While doing this, I found it was best to just brush it on in one direction so that the extra little fiber is kind of smoothed out and you don't have little stringy bits everywhere. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to glue them in place in the holes in the back of the head that we added. And then I'm going to take a little bit of epoxy clay and I'm going to add that around the bases of them. That way it looks like the head kind of fades from a thicker point to a thinner point until it gets to the poseable antennae. I'm going to have to wait for that to cure, but then the following day we can start painting our clay pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an orange, very similar to the fabric that we started off with, and I'm going to get everything primered orange. So I'm going to go over the entire head and both feet. Once that's dried, I can start kind of doing what we did with the fabric and start adding darker sections to it and turning it to a more red color. And so like with the feet, I'm going to have the toes darker and I'm going to blend it into the orange. So I'm going to start off with that brown and then I'm going to darken it to more of a red. And then I kind of wanted to go really, really dark, so I decided to transition it to more of a black. And then I'm obviously going to be painting our claws black as well. Thank you. 
Now for the head, I'm mainly going to be darkening the orange to more of a red on the top portion of the head. Um, everything else I'm going to kind of leave the same for now, and then I'm going to start working on the shadows. So, like how I normally do my shadows, I take some watered down black, kind of go over everything, and wipe away the excess paint. Um, for sections that I want to darken more, I'll go in and just add more black to it and try and blend it into the current black. Now I'm also going to be darkening up the end where the beak is and blending it into the orange and then the base for both of the sails I'm going to darken up as well. Um, those are going to be that blue color so once I have the shadows around the base in place I'm going to switch over to doing the blue. I'm going to start off with a darker blue at first and then gradually blend in to more of a uh, brighter blue. I'm also going to be adding that blue to the ends of the antennae and blending it into the orange. And then lastly, we need to paint our lines, all the little different markings and stuff, and the eyes. So I'm going to figure out where all the different lines and stuff need to be drawn on the face, get those placed, and then I'm going to start working on the eyes. For the eyes, I'm going to start off with kind of a more brownish yellow and then slowly brighten the center up. I'm going to add a dot for the little pupil and then I'm also going to adjust it here and there to make sure that there's some highlights and stuff. Nothing too fancy because they're very tiny so I can't really get too much detail into them. I'm going to touch up the eyelids a little bit because I did get some paint on them so I'm going to clean those up and then let everything dry. Okay, so we have all the pieces for our Taruk and we can start putting him together. So I put together a really quick wire frame and we're going to start adding everything to this wire frame, starting with the wings. So I'm going to add the wire frames that are inside of the wings to the body wire frame. So I'm just going to wrap everything together with a thinner gauge wire and I'm going to also cover it in hot glue to kind of lock everything in. Oh, real quick, I almost forgot we need to add the claws to the wings, so I'm going to glue those in place real quick and then just kind of close up the rest of the little finger piece. And then I can take both sets of wings and sew them together, that way they turn into more of a one set of wing. So I'm just going to stitch the base of them together real quick and then we can start taking the rest of the body fabric and doing the same. So I'm going to start with the back section and I'm going to start sewing the wings in place to this. Once I have the wings connected to the back fabric, I'm going to take the back section of the neck and connect it to the rest of the body. So I'm going to sew that in place and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our clay head and we can add it to the wire frame. So I'm just going to fill the back of the head with some hot glue. I made a hole for this and then I'm going to just stick that wire for the neck right in there. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to start gluing the fabric for the neck around the base of the head. So I'm going to start with the back section and then I'm going to take the underbelly section which also has the under section of the neck connected to it and I'm going to glue that to the underside of the head. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then once it's done drying I can start sewing the sides of the neck closed. So I'm just going to kind of go down the neck a little bit, stuff it, and then continue going down the neck a little bit more, stuff it until I get to the body section. 
And then I'm just going to do the same thing to the body, continue going down the sides of the body, stuffing, sewing, stuffing, sewing, until we get to the very end and everything is closed up. Now we just need to add our legs. So I have the wires sticking out for those and we're going to take the fabric for the legs and start sewing them around the base of that so where the wire comes out will be inside of the leg. So I'm just going to sew that around that on both legs. I'm going to have to adjust the wire length just a little bit. Always make sure that it's a little longer just to be safe. So I'm going to adjust that and then we can start adding our clay feet to the ends of the wires. So I'm just going to wrap those in place and then we can start gluing the fabric around the bases of those. Stuff and close up the back of the legs. Okay guys, and here is our Taruk. I just love the colors of him. He came out so good. I haven't done something this like hand dyed and painted in quite a while, but yeah. I'm so happy. I can't wait to send him off to the buyer that commissioned him. Um, obviously not for sale, but if you guys are interested in other art dolls, you can check out my website. I've got a bunch still there for sale. Um, also, while you're down there, you can check out the links. I've got a bunch of different links to different art supplies that I like using. So if you wanted to try and make your own Taruk, you can see what I ended up using to make him. Um, now, these are affiliated links, so if you do buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!